Hi guys, welcome to my tutorial on how to make a weapon trail in Blender. Um, I'll show you my result first, so you'll be all impressed. Cause like, damn, look at that particle trail right there. That kick at the end is kind of weird, but let's end this at 150. Yeah, that, that lends enough mystery to the viewer, I think. You just don't know what the outcome of that last kick will be. Anyways, that was like a fight scene I made a kind of long time ago. But it's a good stage to add particle trails. So let's, let's save this first so I don't mess anything up. And then let's delete this plane which we used as the basis for this whole thing. Um, I'm just going to shift the camera a bit. And then I'm going to create a plane. Cool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit shift and then right click on your character to um, select both of these. So first select this, then shift click, select that. We're going to tab and then select any three vertices, preferably ones close to the foot. I think I'll select these three actually. And then I hit control P, make vertex parent. And now, let's move this plane back into place. Ooh, boy. There was some lag. I'm just gonna... Okay. I think that'll do. That'll do. Um, shrink it a bit. And now... Um... Oh, right. I forgot. No, what? How... No, the trail is still there. Um is represented by these curve objects over here which I'm going to quickly delete. Let's go back to this plane and well you say it's so firmly attached to this foot so clearly we can just start B-Trace already. Um, if you don't have B-Trace already installed um, take, a look, take a look at my description. It'll, it'll guide you through that process. Um, Anyways, if we hit run, just so that it follows this plane, one of the first things you will notice, nothing really happened. What's up with that? Well, see, there is a curve object that was created, but it's, uh, it's just one point. That's no good. So let's delete that, let's edit that translation, and then delete that curve. Now, the reason this is happening is because this plane is parented to this leg, but relative to the leg, it doesn't feel like it's moving at all. So, we need to tell it to feel movement, and how we do that is we do this thing called baking in action. We're going to bake from 0 to 150. We're going to use visual keying, which basically means um, put keyframes on its visual location its final transformation with its constraints, you know. Um, and we're gonna hit okay. We're gonna hit okay. And for whatever reason, that puts it in this weird place. Um, no, I know why. It's because it's it has these keyframes, but it's still parented, so it'll have two effects. We don't want that. Boom, back to normal. Now let's hit run, and you'll see. You'll see. It'll create our trail. By the way. These settings, I already kind of put them in place. So let's first make sure this works. Oh, yeah, it works. So I put step size as 1 because you want every frame to have a new uh, curve. Start frame 1, end frame 200. That was a mistake. Let's move that to 150 because that's the way our animation is. If, if you don't do that, well, you'll see. I'll just go to the last frame and you'll see that... Um, Yep, right there. The curve ended before the character's animation did. Um, this has happened like every single time I've recorded this tutorial, so clearly this is a very important pitfall that you do not want to fall in. Um, so we're going to delete that curve. And we're going to edit its translation, like so. I don't know what edit translation does. I do not. We're going to select our plane again. 0 to 150, 1 to 150, um, curve settings, Bezier vector, um, 
I believe lowering this resolution, adjust the bevel, I think we can just set that to 1. Surface resolution, I'm pretty sure we can adjust all this afterwards though. Yeah. Anyways, let's let's try adjusting it afterwards. I think this should work this time. Let's go to some random frame. Ooh, okay. So, see here you'd probably want the trail coming out of his fist because his leg isn't doing some crazy movement. It's just going forward. So it looks really weird. But anyways, we can select this curve and we can edit it however we want, really. This preview U... I don't know what the U is, what U stands for. It's I think it's just resolution really. Um okay. Right there. That's a that's a cool kick, right? Okay, boom, like that. Should I be doing gro No, I shouldn't be doing grow 5. I should be doing grow 0. Um delete the curve. Yeah, um, those animation settings, it's kind of hard to keep track of what does what. So anyways, let's do this again. Okay, see, this this is good because um, grow zero means it's going to be thick the whole way. Uh, this, this trail thingy. What's 2D do? Yeah, 2D is a mess. 3D is also a mess now. Let's control Z out of that. Nightmare, really. There we go. Yeah, just fill it full. Um, what is this preview U? What is this render U? Bevel depth? Okay, that's just how thick it is. See, we can make a really thick trail. Um, like so. And we can make the resolution, like, so that it is circular in form. How cool is that? And also, we are going to adjust this active spline resolution U. That is doing nothing, apparently. Tilt, ease, B spline cardinal, cyclic. That's not doing anything at all. Okay. Okay, so one thing you can do is like keyframe this start and end. That would be interesting. So you wouldn't get that that taper right there. And then you could like solidify and Okay, so which U should we be using? Cuz there's the resolution Okay, yeah, why do we, we don't care about the bevel resolution. You can see it's affecting the curve right there. Um, like, even at zero, it's just fine. So let's set the resolution U, which I think is what we should be, should have been focusing on, to 12. Delete this curve. I mean, you should be getting to the point of, like, what I'm doing. Um, right now, I'm just basically polishing this curve. And once we get into materials, we may have some more fun. Um, okay, so like this, for example. There's a good shot. What we can do is... Well, as a diffuse, it looks a bit like this. Which is interesting. But... Of course, we can change this material to whatever we want. We can change it to uh, glossy, which is, you know, just reflective. Um, doesn't seem to work well here when the lighting is down. But if we were to set that to 1, then you would see it reflects, and that's pretty cool. Definitely fits in with our low-poly art style, but we could also switch to uh, volume emission. And as you can see, it kind of creates this effect. And then if you combine that with making the uh, bevel depth like 0.5 or something ridiculous, well one thing you can do is make two curves and make one of the bevels 0.1 or like 
0 0.05 and then make the other one 0 0.5 and then you'll sort of have um, like almost a lightsaber effect where the emission is stronger in the middle but this might be enough anyways um, that's my tutorial for B-Trace and I hope you guys enjoyed um, I'm just gonna play it off one more time I'm by my laggy computer. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, next tutorial might be on that little particle punch right there. So give this video a like if you like those particle punches and want to see a video on that. On that, boom! Look how cool that is. Look how cool that is. I might even I might even show render. That's 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 spoiling though. Anyways, thanks for watching.